All right, why don't we have a look at a, another one here, one of these rotational problems. So let's say we've got, we're going to use this pulley, and we're going to raise that weight. <coughs> okay, um, let's find the speed of the block after one and a half seconds. We'll assume the block starts from rest. Now what we've got is some sort of motor tied into this pulley, and we've got the uh, moment that the motor creates there. And that's uh, 680 Newton meters. So that's the moment. Okay, now we've done things like this before, but we've always said the pulley was small and massless and things like that. But now we're going to consider what the nature of the pulley and, and its characteristics. All right, so you're given the information on the pulley. You've got the mass of the hollow ring, and that makes up the outer part of the pulley the rim and then you've also got a thin plate a thin disc on the inside of the pulley so you've got two objects that are being put together to make the pulley and you notice they've got a fair amount of mass to them 18 kilograms for that ring on the outside 12 for the disc on the inside all right and we want to figure out what's the speed of the block after one and a half seconds is what we'd like to do here now the deal with this conceptually is is this is a little different than what we've done before because this uh, moment here is going to go into lifting the weight that's primarily what it's trying to do but the other thing it's got to do is spin the pulley so kind of conceptually when I think about this I think of that moment as a sense is kind of being split into two parts okay so part of that 680 Newton meters is going to lift the weight but the other part of it is going to spin the pulley. So you're going to divide up the available uh, moment, the available torque, whatever you want to call it, to do those two things. Okay? So you're going to have to find a way to kind of combine those two actions into one analysis. Okay? So a key assumption here is the rope doesn't slip on the pulley. So when the rope moves, the pulley turns. So that's how we'll look at that. Now, uh, we've got a couple other things going on here, too. Um, that pulley is kind of shaped with a, a thin inner disc and then a, a bigger rim kind of going around it. So we have to break that uh, moment of inertia for the pulley into two pieces, the thin disc on the inside and the hollow ring on the outside. So we have to go ahead and do that. Now that, that leads to a little bit of just thinking we got to do on this because what we want is this radius for the thin disc. Okay. And you're given the diameter there is 0.5 meters. So that, that'll be the diameter of the thin disc. So it'll have a radius of 0.25 meters. But when we want the radius for the outer um, the hollow ring there on the outside of the disc, that won't be 0.25. That'll be the average of 0.5 and 0.6, which will be 0.55. And then, so that's 0.55 for the diameter of the hollow disc or the hollow ring when you're doing the moment of inertia calculation. And then half of that will be 0.275 meters. So that's the radius to the middle of the outer uh, hollow ring okay and then the last radius you're going to want to look at will be the actual radius that we use when we relate how the uh, pulley spins and how the weight lifts and that'll actually be the outer radius which will be half a point six okay so we got three different radii we're using there for different parts of this analysis you got to keep that straight so 0.5 diameter for the thin disc, which is a 0.25 radius. 0.55 diameter when you find the moment of inertia of the hollow ring. That's the kind of the average diameter of it. Okay, but then you use the outer diameter when you relate how the pulley turns versus how the weight lifts. So we want to kind of be thinking about that. Okay. So we got a thin disc, 
and then we got a hollow ring. So those are the equations we'll use. We're kind of rotating perpendicular to the flat surface of the disk and through the center of the hollow ring. So we'll be using those Z formulas, MR squared for the ring and one half MR squared for the disk. So we'll put those together and get the, uh, the total moment of inertia for that pulley. So for the thin disk, it's one half mass times the 0.25 radius squared. And then for the ring, it's 18 kilograms times, which is the mass of the ring, times 0.275 meters squared. So when you combine all that stuff together, you get 1.74 kilogram meters squared. Okay. And I've got an explanation of those radii right here. Now we're going to be looking at some uh, oh, different reactions of things here too. So I went ahead and found the weight of the pulley and the weight of the block. They'll enter into this. So I just took the masses. The pulley has a combined mass of 30 kilograms times gravity to get the weight. And then the block, 210 kilograms times gravity to get its weight. So we're just getting all the weights and masses lined out here. And also kind of, again, that rotational equivalent of mass, which is moment of inertia. That's for the pulley. So we're good on all that kind of preliminary stuff? We're doing all right? Okay. Now, as I was kind of going over earlier here, we got to relate how the pulley spins versus how the weight lifts. And we're looking at accelerations here. And we're assuming the rope doesn't slip on the pulley. So there's a direct relationship between A on the weight and alpha for the pulley. So the relationship there will be A is R alpha. So what A is really is the tangential acceleration on the edge of that, or the rim of that pulley as it rotates. And that will relate directly to the acceleration of the rope as it spins and, or excuse me, as it lifts up the weight. And just to clarify what I was saying earlier there, that R will be 0.3, it'll be half the 0.6, okay? So we gotta do, we do have to keep track of all these different radii we've got. Okay, so we're getting all the kind of the, the background information we need collected there. Now, there's going to be two ways to do this. Um, you know, we've kind of done things not exactly like this, but a bit like them, like it. One way to do it is to break it into two free body diagrams, okay? And conceptually, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Not conceptually, because we think of uh, a linear motion of the uh, weight there rather differently than we do the rotational motion of the pulley so breaking it into two free body diagrams, I think, is the easiest to kind of understand, you know, what, what we're up to here. Um, it does get a little bit more complicated in that you get, you know, two equations and two unknowns, and you get the tension of the rope as an unknown because to get those two independent free body diagrams, you got to cut through the, the rope, okay? So why don't we draw free body diagrams of both objects, the pulley and the block? separate free body diagrams, include the accelerations there, okay? And this is a big part of solving this thing, is getting those free body diagrams.
So you just want to get the weights on there and the cable tensions and accelerations too. And just get all those three things are what you'd be thinking about here. And I guess probably the reactions on the pulley too. All right. So on that weight, we got a tension pulling up, right? And the weight down. And we have the weight. You could fill in the number. And then what else do we got on that block? If we're doing dynamics here. Yeah, it's going up, right? Okay. So you know the weight. So the two unknowns there are the acceleration and the tension. All right. Now on the pulley, so we good with that, with the block? Now which way is the tension going on the pulley? Yeah, it's going down because that block's pulling down on that. And that's going to be the same tension as is going up on the block. So that's one unknown. And then we've got the weight of the pulley, which really isn't going to affect the rotation too much. But then we got these reactions, you know, R, Y, and X, I think. And then we've also got the acceleration of the pulley. And what, what's that one doing? How are we going to show that? Or yeah, see, that's all it's doing. It's not accelerating up, down, or left, or right. So it's rotating. Well, I mean, you could have tangential acceleration. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You could. But that would be, for, you're right, that would be at an individual point. We're kind of dealing more with the pulley here. Okay, yeah. So, so we got something like that. Okay. Now, you can see the unknowns here, the ones that matter for this rotational bit or the tension. That's one, and then A and alpha. So that's three unknowns, and that's one too many. But we've got, we see we're assuming that rope doesn't slip, which for a pulley ought to be a pretty good assumption. So what we got there is we can relate alpha to A. So A is R alpha, so alpha is A over R. R is the outer radius, because that's where the rope sat on the edge, on the rim, so that's 0.3. So alpha is A over R. So that, that's a pretty good shot at the free body diagram. So, and that's half the battle is just kind of getting those lined out, something like that. Oh, I forgot the moment there. I forgot that uh, moment that's applied to the, uh, to the pulley. That, of course, we need that because that drives everything. So I forgot about that. Okay. So we good with that? Okay. All right, and then once you've got those, it's just a matter of throwing equations at it, okay? Now, these are going to be slightly different in how we apply them, because for the block, it's F equals MA. That's all linear. The block hasn't started to rotate yet. It's just being lifted straight up. And But then for the pulley, it's going to be M equals I alpha, okay? So you're going to have to relate them like that. So why don't you get an equation for the block and then an equation for the pulley? And, you know, don't, don't get distracted on that. It's just uh, on the block, it's F equals MA. And then for the pulley, it's M equals I alpha. 
and the moment for the pulley, of course, will be about its center. So that's going to take the weight and the reaction out of there. I didn't even bother showing REX because it, it's zero, but okay. So you want MA and you want F equals, or the moment about A is IA alpha for the pulley, and then F equals MA for the block, okay? That's how you want to approach that. And then once you got those equations generated, you want to relate them together. And the way you relate them together is they both have the same tension. You do need to get alpha expressed as a function of A. Because uh, what we're trying to do here with this is to find how that block's moving, which is about A. So you want alpha equals uh, uh, A over R, okay? So that way you've got the pulley equation in terms of A and the block equation in terms of A, and they both have tension in them, so you can relate them together and solve them simultaneously. That's kind of the, what you're up to with this. Okay. But the first step is just to get those equations generated. The whole algebra thing, you know, that's you can worry about that later, but just get a decent equation to generate for both. You all doing okay with those? And again, you know, it, it sounds kind of stupid to say this, but my advice on this is don't think too much about it, you know. Um, again, I know it sounds stupid, but it works sometimes if you're confused on stuff. Just use, use your tunnel vision on this, okay? And the tunnel vision you're going to use on the block is F equals MA. Just for what you see in front of you, for that free body diagram, just apply this equation. Get the forces and weights on the left and the masses and accelerations on the right. And then the tunnel vision you're going to apply for the uh, pulley there is you got I about the center, which is IA. You want to solve for alpha. And to do that, you relate that to MA. Okay, that's how, you, that's how you're going to figure this thing out. Okay. So that's that's the deal, and I don't know. I don't overthink it. Just do it. You know? Got that little something going in there. Okay. Okay, so for the block, that's the simpler of the two. It's just the tension up minus the 2060 weight is MA, 210A. Now the tension needs to be positive, the weight negative, because tension's going up, weight's going down. We're assuming it's accelerating up, so the MA's on the right, positive. Okay. Now for the pulley, we got the couple that's applied, 680. I'm calling counterclockwise positive. I, quite often in dynamics, I call the direction of motion positive. But then I got to remember that point 3T provides a counter moment. 
Okay, so it'll be minus 0.3t. That tension creates a moment. And then I equate that to I alpha. But again, I don't want my unknown to be alpha. I want it to be A, so I'll plug in A over 0.3 for alpha. Okay. And then I just work down. So we got on those, those equations. We got any questions on that? So if you get yourself a nice picture here, you can generate those. Okay. So we're good. All right. So what I what I, what I what I've got there in common between the two is the tension, and I'm not really looking for the tension right now. I'm, I want to know what the block's doing. So I'll solve both of them for t with the in, with the intention here of equating what results together. You know, I don't know if that sentence came out quite right, but I'm going to solve them both for t, and then I'm just going to relate them together. Okay. So I just go through the algebra to get each of those solved for t. So when I work through on the left for the pulley, t is 2267 minus 19.33a. Notice I've got that alpha that I originally had changed into a. And on the right, I've got t is 210a plus 2060. So now I can relate those two things together, all right? So we doing all right with that? We got any questions on this stuff? Doing okay. Right. So then I just equate the two expressions together because they're both equal to t, and I can solve for a. So I get 2267 minus 19.33a <coughs> is 210a plus 2060. So I get the numbers on one side. So 2267 minus 2060 is 207. And I get the A terms on the other. So 210A plus 19.33A is 229.33A. And then I solve for A, 0 0.901 meters per second squared. So there's the acceleration of that block. Right. We want to figure out what's happening to the block. I think we want its velocity after such and such a time. I think is how I worded it. Yeah, 1.2 seconds. Yeah. Okay, so once you got A, you can do kinematics and find the velocity. Okay. So, so are we good with that? And, and the, the upside of this approach is it's conceptually for me, it's simpler. You know, I kind of break it into two pieces. I can see what each piece is doing. I do have to kind of work through two equations and two unknowns. And one of the key things on this bit is you got to get this alpha. A is R alpha, so alpha is A over R. you got to remember that thing, okay? But I can relate them together. So, you know, that's the advantage of this. Now, you can do this a different way also if you like. This is one way to do it. Okay. Now, the other way to do it is to treat the objects as one system. You kind of have to do a little bit of a trick to, to do this, but you can treat both objects as one system. Okay. All right, now if you do this, you kind of have to use one of these equations in kind of a, a little different way, all right? And so the equation I'm going to use this time is this inertial moment equation. This one here. Now, for starters, I don't have any acceleration anywhere in this system in the x direction, so that zeroes out, so that's good. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up an IA alpha. And what that'll be will be IA for the pulley times alpha. Now I express alpha as A over 0.3. So that's, that first term accounts for the pulley spinning. 
Now, I also got to account for the fact that this weight is lifting. So that's 210 times A. But I can't just take an MA and equate it to an I alpha. They, the units don't match. I can't do that. So somehow I've got to get this MA into more of a rotational kind of mode. So what I'm kind of looking at is this acceleration, this vertical acceleration as that block moves up. Okay, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of take that as an inertial sort of force, and then I can convert that into an inertial moment by adding a moment arm to it. So it's kind of like a force. You can apply it anywhere along its line of action. I'm just going to take that acceleration of that mass up like that. And then I'm just going to put the moment arm that it has as it rotates around A, and I'm going to add that in there, that 0.3 meter moment arm. So conceptually, this is a little more difficult, but the algebra is simpler. So you can kind of take your pick on these. Usually you can apply either method to it. Okay. So what I've got here on the right is IA times alpha. Alpha is expressed as A over 0.3. And then I've got MA for the block. So the IA was for the pulley. MA is for the block. But then I got to tack a moment arm on there to, for two reasons. One is because in this system, it is essentially going to start rotating about A. Not just yet, but that's kind of what the motion is going to be. And also, I've just got to make the units match. I just can't take it, MA and match it to I alpha. They just don't, they don't match. I can't add them together. It doesn't mean anything. So I got to add a moment arm to it to make it into a kind of a moment kind of term. All right. So that's treating the whole system as one. And then over there on the left, I got the static stuff. So I'm applying a counterclockwise couple, but I've got the weight of the block going down, and it's got a 0.3 moment arm. See, the block has that 0.3 moment arm both times. See, once for the weight and the other for the acceleration. Notice the signs are different though. That one's negative because the weight goes down. That one's positive because the acceleration goes up. Okay. So this is a quicker, easier to work out solution with the algebra and all that, but it is a little conceptually a little bit more difficult, I think. So, you know, pick, pick whichever way you like. You get to the same answer either way. Okay. And then, uh, so either way you get to the acceleration. And then once we're to the acceleration, what we'd like to do here would be to find the velocity, okay? So so we, we good on this stuff? We got questions on this? All right, so you can go ahead and do V equals V0 plus AT. You got A is 0 0.901 and T is 1.5, so you can get the velocity. Just multiply them together and add them to the initial velocity, which is zero. Okay. So that would be the same thing as the tangential velocity of any point. Yeah, right, yeah. If you uh, you know have a point here anywhere, yeah, like you say, anywhere on the rim of the wheel, if you just paint a dot there, that is the tangential velocity of that point. And that, that's an important part of solving this thing, is equating those two things together. That's all done by the fact that you assume the, wheel, the rope doesn't slip on the pulley. Okay. Other, uh, other questions on that? You doing all right? So I'll get you some of these to be working on. Now these things take a little time and they're a little involved. Um, so, you know, just be aware of that. I think I actually have, there might be some solutions to these on modal if you're having trouble with them. Because these things are, this is kind of what I call real dynamics here. I mean, this stuff's a little tricky. So 642, or 342, I'm sorry. And then 344. And 345, I think. And these will be due on Wednesday. 
right? Because today is Wednesday. Hang on, no, do Monday. I'm sorry, do Monday. And I'm pretty sure that's the 4th of June. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. And like I say, give yourself a bit of time on these ones. They're, they're a little involved. These are like, this is 28A and B. This is where these are at. These are kind of separate little problems hanging out there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be fine. I'll just hang on. I just have a question. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. 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 That's fine.